Your Life in Sex Island, Chapter 3, Our Credit Card, page 74. If you are born and raised in a snugly atomic family, not atomic family, you idiot, nuclear family, perhaps you cannot understand what abortion is all about. Perhaps then you should recuse yourself from the discussion. You just may be ignorant. How can you know? You almost must be ignorant of the subject matter. I will, in turn, recuse myself if you are talking about a warm, furry family. So, what if I had been aborted or been delivered stillborn? What if? What if? If I had been aborted, the world would be changed in unknown ways. Would I care? I certainly would not. Would God care? Get real. Would my wife care? She might be married to the man of her dreams. I can tell you it is no fun to be an unwanted child. It is life stunting. It is a night of nightmares, a life of never a peaceful dream. When my parents died at different times in different cities, their property and valuables were divided up. There was nothing for Teddy. Being an unwanted child does not miraculously end at 18 months or 18 years. Being unwanted has no end. Unlike the sword of Damocles, it hangs by a horsehair over you always. If you have not walked there, you know it not. So, if you are not or were not an unwanted child, shut up about abortion. You are an ignoramus on the subject, and it is none of your business, unless you are pregnant and it is your abortion that is under consideration, in which case it is none of my or anyone else's business. Just shut your mouth, you stupid asshole. It is none of your business. It is the business of the hapless girl, lady, or woman who is pregnant. She can get advice from whomever she pleases, but she should not be coerced or shamed into doing anything other than what she decides. She should not bring an unwanted child into this coarse, unforgiving, and ununderstanding world. If you want to stop abortions, make sure that we have lots of real education about sex and birth control. Got that? Limit yourself to making sure that boys, men, gentlemen, girls, women, and ladies Know what they are about when their dick gets hard and their pussy gets tummy lows pink and wet. And the pecker will absolutely simply die if it doesn't get cuddled in that nice, warm, moist cunt. And that vagina will spin into oblivion if it is not resuscitated by the stroking of that manly tool. One abortion eliminates one unwanted child, one compromised ego, one victimized and perhaps tortured youth, one beaten lad or lass, one lost soul, one incomplete adult, one no self-confidence human, one struggling bugger, one sliced human, perhaps one frustrated, manic, cruel, victimized, frantic, confused, troubled, wanting, bewildered half-person, one burdened mother, one incomplete lady, one resentful woman, one harried father, one troubled father, one rueful man, perhaps a ruined, forced, resentful marriage. An abortion is usually a blessing. A million abortion eliminates three million unfortunate, partial, troubled humans and three million troubled relationships. An earth populated by unwanted children is not a happy earth to contemplate, an earth of crime, distress, and trouble. Not a month goes by without a story of some child or children being tortured, often to death. Most such stories are hidden. I have heard of dozens that never made it to page three or further obscurity. Do not bring or let others bring into the world unwanted child or children. Eliminate abortions by eliminating unwanted pregnancies. Eliminate unwanted pregnancies by eliminated conceptions. 
fucking causes conceptions. The only way to eliminate fucking is to eliminate animals. Say and save your matins for birth control. Since this is called a free country, particularly by men who do not wish it so, I must confess that there are quasi homo sapiens with debauched craniums who hold an opinion opposite to that which I have just expressed. As Patrick Henry might have said, I will fight to the death for the right to hold any dissolute opinion that they wish. However, holding an incorrect opinion and screaming the same along with foul obscenities at young girls engaged in lawful activity are two contrary situations. Though both the holding and screaming in that situation clearly reflects sourly upon one's parents and upbringing, as well as indicating a depreciated intelligence. They are rarely arrived at without the erroneous reading and interpretation of one revered, claimed holy book or another. Since asses will continue braying, such contrary and erroneous opinions will continue to be sprayed over the land. The Catholic Church in particular can be forgiven for extolling the breeding and production of compromised children as this gives them ample material for their rump affairs. The Catholic Church must bear responsibility for the near destruction of the earth because they have been actively supporting and demanding the election of duplicious, compromising Republicans, including George W. Bush. It is not just the Catholic Church. It is nearly the whole of the religious industry which has fought for the destruction of the earth. I bow to religion as it is richer and more adroit business than even the insurance business. The insurance business sells a product which it has no intention of delivering. The religion business sells fear relief, fear which it creates from the depths of the beast side of man. The religion business creates the fear and then promises to maintain that fear with the distant and non-achievable fear relief that they promise will never come. The only fear relief is death, and they charge for that. It is a great business, and I am green with envy. I was imperfectly happy to pay for the religion industry as long as they didn't try to destroy me. But now that they have attacked me personally, I chafe at having to pay them while they abuse me. I concede that the religion industry has the right to say whatever they wish about any subject, and since they have the right, I believe that it follows that if they so believe, they also have the duty to say whatever they desire. However, when they say that to which I object, I then object to having to pay them to say it. How do I have to pay them? The city must obtain funds to operate. I am forced to pay what the city considers my share. But since the religion industry is excused from paying their share, I must make up the difference. My share is, therefore, increased to make up the religion industry's shortfall. This, I believe, abuses me. In fact, the religion business is a highly profitable business and it is eminently able to pay its share. Why are they excused from paying? Likewise, the federal government requires funds to maintain and increase operations, to wage war, to reward thieves, to pay miscreants, etc. Again, the religion industry is excused from paying their fair share when they, in fact, approve and urge the insane acts of the federal government. And I must make up the difference. This is clearly taxation without representation. I find it repugnant that I must pay for activities which are not sanctioned by my government and which therefore I can have no influence upon such activities. And thus it seems radically unfair that I must support these activities of the religion business. The religion industry should, I firmly believe, lose their exemption from paying taxes when they engage in political and social activities which go against my fundamental rights and my core beliefs. We have to stop here. Please purchase my book, Your Life in Sex Island, by clicking on the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.